This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to an inspirational new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Some people have asked me how I'm able to put out as much consistent content as I do, and the truth of that might be revealed in today's episode. So dig out your sketchbooks and grab your pens, because today we're talking about Lenan Shi. Lenan Shi are figures in Irish folklore, whose name comes from the Gaelic words that roughly translate along the lines of fairy lover or fairy mistress. They're spirits who come to the aid of those suffering from the slings and arrows of writer's block, artist block, or any other type of creative block. So she basically acts like a muse for struggling creative types who want to make something great. The Lenan Shi gives the artist inspiration, motivation, creative spark, happiness, and success, and in return, she gets to have sex with you. Sounds like a win-win to me. Except in the realm of spells and fairies, things are rarely that cut and dry. Lenan Shi don't provide these services for nothing. In exchange for their gifts, they often collect the blood, or in some cases it's more of a soul thing, of the artist that they're servicing making them more like this mix of muse and vampire. It's also said that rather than drinking it directly from their host, they just collect it in a great big cauldron, which I think is rather sophisticated of them. Unfortunately for the artist, they don't get to just trade away a bit of their blood or soul in exchange for divine inspiration and some hot fairy coochie, because once a Lenan Shi has her metaphorical teeth in a man, he's pretty much doomed. After the Lenan Shi has had her fill of a man, she'll wander off to find a new lover, leaving the artist to wallow in the depths of despair from their lost love. Artists visited by a Lenan Shi are generally driven mad and frequently suffer an early death. Perhaps the most famous Lenan Shi are the Fairy Queen Anya, and while most Lenan Shi are seen as female spirits, there does seem to be at least one record of a male muse seducing a young female artist dating all the way back to the 1860s. Despite their great powers, Lenan Shi do seem to have one weakness. If a human is able to resist their seduction, the Lenan Shi's powers wane, and she must be subservient to her new human master, providing all the upsides of her abilities, but without the blood-draining madness and tragically cut short life. Lenan Shi's compendium entry from Persona 4 Golden refers to her as a beautiful fairy of Irish lore that yearns for a human man's love. She drains her lover's lives in return for granting them artistic inspiration. Design-wise, Lenan Shi has really only ever had one design throughout Megami Tensei, and that's this design which debuted in the original Devil Summoner. Kaneko created a demon that fits the bill quite nicely, combining the beauty of a muse with slightly more sinister-looking undertones. Like, you genuinely could imagine this thing seducing you and then draining you of your blood and or life. One of the most notable features of Lenan Shi's design are the metal puzzle rings she carries in her hands. These wire puzzles are incredibly common and go by many names. They seem to have originated in China, but are known in France as Bogue Nadir, or Time Waster. It's rather fitting that she would carry these things around, as solving them is considered a common method to train your brain, as the stimulation to the mind could be seen as indicative of what she does for the artists. And much like Lenan Shi herself, these Puzzle rings could also drive a man to madness. I mean, I, I just need to... Stupid things. Screw this. As far as game history goes, Lenan Shi has had more than her fair share of stories where her powers are relevant. She appears in Devil Summoner Soul Hackers as one of the main demon partners of the character Koichiro Urabe. Lenan Shi also appears in both the Persona 4 and Persona 5 anime, and in the Lauder's game, her shadow self is known as the Jealous Lover. In Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey, Lenan Shi plays a part in the EX mission The Enchanting Spirit, given to the player by the character Anthony. All of Anthony's requests tend to revolve around him falling in love with various demon girls and asking us to help wingman him, but it usually ends pretty badly for him. One of the demons he falls for is Lenan Shi, whom he describes as having hair as long as she is tall and wearing a simple black dress. It turns out Lenan Shi doesn't remember him at all, but he takes the rejection pretty well. Good for you, just gotta keep trying, man. I swear, there's a hot demon babe out there for me. Uh, you. I mean, you. Clearly, you, not me. That'd be silly. 
In Shin Megami Tensei 5, Lenanchi is involved in two opposing side quests within the first region of Dot, the Spirit of Love and the Water Nymph. In the Spirit of Love, the demon Apsaris requests the Nahobino defeat Lenanchi, as her methods of uplifting and feeding upon those she deems worthy goes against the Water Spirit's visions of how to properly help people. If the player sides with Apsaris, they must fight off Lenanchi and an Ipondatara that she used her powers on to make an incredible blacksmith. However, in The Water Nymph, the Nahobino can side with Lenanchi and fight Epsaurus instead. Completing this quest will also have Lenanchi join you, regardless of level. Another fantastic role from Lenanchi comes from Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2, where she's one of the main demon characters featured in Eileen's unique storyline. Given that Eileen is a writer who wants to create a best-selling book and make lots of money, and also has a girl fetish, yes, that is the actual phrasing the game uses, having a story where Eileen contemplates turning to Lenanchi for inspiration is kind of brilliant. Upon meeting Lenanchi, she's fought as a boss battle to test Eileen's strength. Ultimately, though, Eileen decides not to take Lenanchi's inspiration because she's not looking for a shorter lifespan. But the two do develop a friendship over coffee and chit-chat, which winds up giving Eileen all the inspiration she needs to write a novel about a human and demon girl who fall in love. And probably have a lot of sex or something, I don't know. D2 is known for having pretty solid human-demon interactions, and this one always stood out to me as a memorable one. But perhaps my favorite role of Lenan Shi in the entire franchise comes from Devil Summoner 2 Raido Kuzunoha vs. King Abaddon. One of the case files in the game is called Lenanshi in the Sky, where Raido is required to hand over a Lenanshi with at least 20 in her magic stat in exchange for two diamonds. The name of this quest and the reward seems to be in reference to the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, but that's not where my favorite part of this role comes into place. The flavor text for this quest is a struggling artist who has an idea for a movie, and is perfectly content to sell away pieces of his soul to the Lenan Shi in order to get the artistic inspiration she'll provide. And the name of the person who gives Raido this request is... Mr. Destiny. In other Mega Ten titles, a castle-based theme park clearly modeled on Disneyland is referred to as Destinyland, and I doubt it's a coincidence that the Rido games happened to take place in the early 1920s, which is the same time period Walt Disney began his career. So presumably, the Megami Tensei equivalent of this real-world figure, Wilt Destiny or whomever, canonically got his start in the film industry thanks to the machinations of a Lenan Shi. I think that is a really cool piece of backstory that ties this demon into the franchise's world-building in a subtle but awesome way. Lenan Shi's roles in the franchise generally manage to work in the most fascinating elements of her mythology, and have left us with a gorgeous demon with a lot of presence. Hmm, if I ever met a Lenan Shi, would I be able to make better YouTube videos? But early death, uh, that doesn't really seem worth it. You know what, I'm just gonna ask nicely for all of you to subscribe. And so there you have it, Lenan Shi, the magnificent moving muse milking Moxie from Mooning Men. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.